Okay, here's a new article out that's written after an article that came out last year and more of a culmination that's telling us that scientists have now discovered DNA in people proving the original Native Americans were Caucasians or white as opposed to the Amerindians we thought of and only being Siberians uh, or what you would call the Mongolia Siberoids. Um, here what we're looking at is one of the ladies that was found in burials that are far up into China that are related to the Proto-Indo-Europeans that uh, spread out across there and then eventually it looks like just went right over the top of that and through the Bering Sea Bridge and on into America predating the Amerindians. So let's look into this. There's a new population of Native Americans called the Native White American. A new discovery of ancient DNA may overturn the idea that the Native Americans were first to have populated the American continent. Indeed, according to rawsnewjournal.com, a new group known as the Ancient Beringians, who are more, clo more closely related to modern white Europeans, has been discovered by researchers. Genetic analysis of a baby girl who died at the end of the last ice age shows she belonged to this previously unknown ancient group of Beringians. A baby girl who lived and died in what is now Alaska at the end of the last ice age belonged to a previously unknown group of ancient people who branched off from the ancestors of modern Europeans and according to DNA recovered from her bones. The child was a mere six weeks old whenever she died. She was found in a burial pit and the remains of a stillborn baby also, perhaps a first cousin. A very sombering moment. During excavations of an 11,500-year-old residential camp in Tanana River Valley in central Alaska. The remains were discovered in 2013, but a full genetic analysis has not been possible until now. Researchers tried to recover ancient DNA from both the infants, but succeeded only in the case of the larger individual. They had expected her genetic material to resemble modern northern or southern lineages of Native Americans or the Amerindians but found instead that she had a distinct genetic makeup that made her a member of a separate population. Sorry about that. A new genome from a Pleistocene burial in Alaska confirms a long-standing belief that the European ancestors first arrived in Americas. The new discovery group, named Ancient Beringians, appears to have split off from the Europeans around 20,000 years ago and made their way to North America via Alaska, when the frozen land bridge made the crossing from Europe and Asia into North America possible. The Ancient Beringians then pushed south as the ice caps melted and mixed with other Native American populations, which is why many Native Americans today also exhibit physical characteristics more commonly associated with whites or Caucasians. According to Esk Willerslev, an evolutionary geneticist at the University of Copenhagen, whose team recovers the girl DNA from a dense part of her skull known as the petreus bone, this is where it connects to the skull, they have found that there's a few bones that will hold DNA inside of them. They almost encapsulate it. There's a small one inside your ear also. They say this is a new population of Native Americans, the white Native American. The findings of which were published in the Scientific Journal of Nature are controversial and represent a growing body of evidence being discovered across the world that suggests the origins of the human race may have been Europe and not Africa as once believed. And there's been a lot of uh, things that are showing the out of Africa model that they tried to have whenever they first came up with the idea of evolution and everything has been debunked. They just didn't know much at the time. And it got debunked a long time ago, but people aren't willing to change their dogma that they have built up, you see. Working with scientists at the University of Alaska and elsewhere, Willitslev compared the genetic makeup of the baby named Jakati Anateidiga, or Sunrise Child Girl, and I guess that does fit for these proto indo Europeans were sun worshippers. She's called this by the local community. With genomes from other ancient and modern people, they found that nearly half of the girl's DNA came from the ancient North Europeans who lived in what is now Scandinavia. 
The rest of her genetic makeup was a roughly even mix of DNA carried by the northern and southern Native Americans. Using evolutionary models, the researchers show that the ancestors of the first Native Americans started to emerge as a distinct population about 35,000 years ago, and about 25,000 years ago, this group mixed with and bred with ancient North Asians in the region, the descendants of whom went on to become the first white Europeans to settle the New World way, way before Columbus. During the last Ice Age, not so much water was locked up in the ice caps that a land bridge reached from Europe to Asia to North America across what is now the Bering Strait. The uh, ocean was about 420 feet lower than it is now and if you lowered it that much you get um, a lot more land exposed of course but they also believe that these people had boating and without believing that they cut across they're believing they went from shore to shore to shore skirting around the edges all the way and some of these actually went all the way down to South America others came in and blended at this point but let's continue <coughs> Willerslev believes the ancestors of these early white Europeans traveled to the continent in a single wave of migration more than 20,000 years ago those who settled in the north became an ancient Beringians he said while those who moved south along and through the ice sheets split into the North and South Native Americans at about 15,700 years ago. And this might explain why there's a lot of tales in the South Americans about their gods being blue-haired and bearded and things. But instead of it being from the primordial origin, it was from contact that it happened again and because they knew what had happened before, they pinned it on them. They even thought that uh, Pizarro was actually him coming back, Quetzalcoatl himself, and uh, he even relates that the locals there were as light as Spaniards, and that they saw a blonde-haired girl there with a baby, and he asked about her, and they said that she was one of the last of the children of the gods. At the same time, they were worshipping him as if he was Veracocha come back, so it's quite a strange thing. And of course, uh, now we know that smallpox and things broke out in between them, and, and it just really devastated the population. But uh, right here we see a polar bear uh, effigy that they have cut out of ivory, and uh, so that's kind of neat. And uh, so you can tell it's, it's a polar bear, you know. And you know how they lay down and slide sometimes? I mean, I don't know what it has to do with that more than anything, but... Um, but there's another possibility. Ben Potter, an archaeologist on the team, from the University of Alaska in Fairbanks suspects that the Beringians split from the ancestors of Native Americans in Europe before both groups made their way across the land bridge in North America in separate migrations. He says to support this scenario is pretty strong. We have no evidence of the people in Beringia region around 20,000 years ago. Well, so all they have to do is look more and they'll probably eventually find some and whenever they do, it'll blow that theory back out of the water too, if they do. If they don't, they'll ride this, whether it's true or not. But then again, this does show a truth. Potter suggests that alternatively, these early European settlers may have mixed with Asians before crossing over to North America and were responsible for creating the original Native American people. Other people say that they had come over totally separate and later mixed in different correlations, and that's how you get the different forms of Amerindians, seeing they're wildly different from Hopi Indians all the way to Arapaho and things like that they look quite different the families who lived at the ancient camp may have spent months there Potter said excavations at the site known as upward Sun River have revealed the last three tent structures or at least three tent structures that would have provided their shelter the two babies were found in a burial pit beneath a hearth where the families cooked salmon caught in that local river the cremated remains of a third child who died at the age of three were found on top of the hearth at the abandoned camp. And this might make sense to where they wanted to leave that area. It may even look like to people, there's a lot of conjecture, could be brought here or not, but there was a sickness and they couldn't keep themselves going good. And I don't know if she couldn't produce milk for the kid or what's going on, but they lost a couple of them at a pretty young age and so on. And the third one and instead of burying it correctly they cremated it and left and abandoned the camp 
like they nuked it for morbid and just decided to leave and to find better pastures and something that would be much better. Now, I don't know if it had to do with a nearly all salmon and shellfish diet or what's going on there, but it didn't work too good. Connie Mulligan, an anthropologist at the University of Florida, said that the findings pointed to a single migration of people from Europe to the New World via, via Asia, but said other questions remained, like how could it be just one, and did they all come together? You won't, you won't believe that it was two groups a week apart, or things like that. People try to pin it down, and they say first, and only, and one group, and all these things, and later they end up getting looking like a fool. You shouldn't pin yourself down there, Smooth so much you should probably just say a group of extant northern Kamchatka Peninsula people came across the Bering Sea. We don't know if there are more to be found yet at this point, but at this point it looks like a single migration event, perhaps. Doesn't that sound a whole lot more? Well, it doesn't sound like you pinned it down real well, but it doesn't sound like you're trying to pin it down and lie whenever it could easily be another way. Imagine that. How, how did people move so quickly to the southernmost point of South America and settle two continents that span a huge climatic and geographic range? They ask. Well, but it may be also a testimony to the hardiness of white European genes and their desire for better living conditions. With the land bridge from Asia to North America fast of disappearing and in search of better food and water, the early Europeans would have feasted on the salmon they caught in the wild, which would have no doubt enhanced their cognitive facilities, or brain matter, and ability to anticipate and assess the rapid changing situation. And a rapid changing situation might have had them leave that area too. There could have been a harsh winter come in and they decided to leave. Um, you know, who, who knows what actually caused that effect. But um, the hardiness of, of the Europeoid or the Caucasian man who has basically gone from the North Pole to the South Pole and every extent in between and decided to call the, climb the tallest mountains just because it was there. And uh, those type people uh, ran around and spread humanity to everybody, it seems, in a strange rubber banding way around through everything. It's uh, kind of amazing to start finding out again after so so long another neat thing about these people up here is they had nice fabrics nicer than the first fabrics they find of anybody else they also find tartans that are mixed with them three different types of fabric a lot of neat things go with this now david reich a geneticist at harvard university said the work boosted the case for a single migration into alaska and then onward to north and south in america but he did not rule out alternatives involving multiple waves of migration there's some sense. He added that he was unconvinced that the ancient Beringian group split from the ancestors of other Native Americans 20,000 years ago because even tiny errors in scientist data can lead to radically different split times for evolutionary lineages. Now, while the 19 and to 21,000 year old date would have an important implication if true and may very well be right and it looks like it's right on, he says, I'm not convinced that there is compelling evidence that your initial split date is that old. And he says, uh, so he's going to try to pin it back to earlier, even though they've got dating and things for it. But he also totally gives up the idea that it's entirely possible that they were an ancient Europeans through and through. So I think this is kind of neat. Neat little story here, and it just shows you one more thing. I have two videos I did last year on the finding and then the... Uh, the dissertation out of it and what somebody wrote an article on and then here's another article on another place so this seems to be correlating quite a bit and if you've been watching my channel recently I have three or four correlations coming out of Beringia and Siberia that show to be the same thing and some of these people are pegging them as the Amerindians some of them are only found in Soviet newspapers because they're talking about people down in the lower Soviet Union and it doesn't get really told about here but if you put those and these together, you can really see how it definitely forms, and there is no conjecture anymore. You look at all these people, and it makes you still wonder now, well, what about those Chinese pyramids that are right by these white people that are here that supposedly predate all the dynasties that they had in China and lead into the first of dynasties? We've looked into that a little bit, but I think we'll try to look into that a little bit more, although I know it becomes a dead end 
because there's not much cooperation on the other end. In fact, they actually recently, uh, whenever they had all the mummies going around, everybody started talking about it, and all of a sudden they denied them and didn't let them go uh, to, was it Chicago or was it, um, I think it was, uh, no, it wasn't, wasn't Philadelphia, was it? One of the two major ones it was supposed to go to, they didn't get to go to. They just shut it down. Yeah, and so whenever they got their exhibit, they got all the little stuff, but they didn't get the mummies that were supposed to set out in the major cast. They weren't going to allow that anymore because they had already been in a couple of places in America, and people were talking quite a bit about it. I've got a video. It shows it. But, uh, yeah, neat information. More to come on this, guys. So like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy. Let me know what you think down in there in the comments about all this. Peace.